You've heard the phrase from pixels to polygons. We know a pixel is simply a dot on a grid that, if used properly, creates an image. A pixel can be big or small and occupies visual space, and it's pretty easy to get, to understand the purpose of, to see its function within an array of visual information. But what about polygons? A polygon is also a 2D shape, and yet they make up all 3D models in video games. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, we ask the question, why do we need polygons in 3D video games? So let's compare video games to real life for a moment. In theory, virtual space acts pretty much the same as real physical space. Unless you put something there, there's nothing in it. There are three dimensions from which you can move something that you put in there, X, Y, and Z. Not only can you place things on these axes, but you can rotate around them. In real life, you can pick something up and look at it from any angle you want. And in a video game, you would need to be able to do the same if you wanted to call it a 3D video game. Now, the difference between virtual space and real space is fairly obvious. Virtual space is simply a representation, an artistic interpretation of things that you see in real space. There is actually quite a lot of interesting parallels between a rendering and the image your brain shows you. The image you perceive as reality is your brain taking all of the light that you observe with your eyes and interpreting it in a manner that can be visually understood. That's not unlike how a video game engine works to render an image for you to see. Now here's where the differences begin. Every object you see in real life is made up of molecules, atoms, tiny units that all cluster together to form different materials, and the processing power necessary to simulate something like that on the scale that you would need in order to make an actual fully functional video game would be a lot more expensive than a PS4. These things only render surface materials and don't actually simulate it. Instead, much like a children's toy, they create a veneer, a resemblance, an imitation. Not that this is a bad thing, it's actually incredible because we've developed this into such an art where it is actually on a lot of levels very realistic. But video games need to engage in something a little less complex than molecular structure in order to create these simulations. Enter geometry. Geometry is the branch of math that concerns itself with shape. In doing calculations in geometry, one maps points. Those points can be placed on a grid, or they can be placed in 3D space. The smallest amount of points that you can connect to create a face, that is to say a surface, is three, which is a triangle. A triangle is a type of a polygon, and a polygonal face is a visual representation of geometry. When one creates an object out of triangles, it can exist and be turned and distorted by changing certain geometry. Through scripting, various points of a polygon can be moved around. If those points are shared by several polygons, it affects all of the faces. Points could be applied to a bone structure that also exists in 3D space. The bone structure could distort those points, could move them around. In fact, this is how a very large amount of animation nowadays is done. Faces can also be separated. This could be done algorithmically or through hand-done animations, and while it may not be a simulation of molecular structure, it looks like an object. If you paint a texture onto it, it can look like skin, bricks, dirt, or whatever you want it to look like. With the addition of shaders, a polygon could do something even more interesting. It could look like a watery surface. It could have grass grow out of it. Any number of things could happen with the application of code, but you need a base object to work off of. Doing it with polygons means doing it in a way that can be easily calculated by certain processes in a manner that takes up significantly less power than more complex simulations. And the reason it's done this way with triangles that can appear rounded by having a lot of them as opposed to creating actually rounded surfaces is because it takes significantly more calculations to create a 3D curve than it does to simply connect two points that are simply listed. Points of a polygon just exist, they're defined. They're kept in data as definite things. They don't need to be recalculated, whereas a curve would be. Every single frame in every single game would have to be a constant recalculation of any 3D curves that exist within it. You could make an arm out of 60 polygons, ensure that it renders smoothly instead of flatly, and any distortions or animations you inflict upon that arm only involve moving points that various faces are connected to. 
There isn't really any recalculation, just move point A12 from XYZ to XYZ. That doesn't involve any complex formulas, it's just a simple transformation. If we had the ability to simulate down to the molecule every single object, we probably wouldn't be using it on video games. Raw processing power and one-to-one -one simulation is not what people play video games for. We play them to get some sort of enjoyment out of a hobby that we like. And knowing that it's polygons, I would hope, doesn't actually hurt the enjoyment of it. What makes video games magical is not that they are perfect. It's that we've created an art form that combines so many different technical, mathematical, scientific methods of processing information to create something that suspends our disbelief and allows us to engage in another world. Why do we need polygons in 3D video games? Technical answer, because polygons take significantly less processing power than a full-blown molecular physics simulation. They're just a more cost-effective choice to do the thing that we want them to do. Which is, by the way, the philosophical answer, because we're playing video games to have fun. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be convincing enough that you enjoy it. Technically and philosophically, polygons work right there in that little sweet spot. And maybe at some point computers will be so advanced that it's not even necessary to consider these types of things. We just fire up the molecular simulator and get the game going. But I'd argue we'll never be at that point until that point is utterly frictionless. When it doesn't make any sense anymore not to do it that way. Until then, it's a magic show. Smoke and mirrors. And it's a good magic show that we all really enjoy going to. Now obviously we made an attempt to make sure that this is a simplified version that people can easily understand, but if you have further questions or you're somebody who does this for a living and have further insight, please leave it in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.